Welcome back. Motion Blue version 6 is finally upon us. Link will be in the description if you want to jump over to David Marty's channel and, and check out what he's got going on. But man, this thing is beautiful. That's all I got to say is this is beautiful. So I was privileged enough to kind of get to play around with this for a while. Um, test things out, see if I found any issues. I never found anything wrong with it, so I never really had to report anything to David Marty as far as testing it. But man, was I happy to be able to have this and play with it. And I'm super excited that everybody's going to have a chance to see what to do with Motion Blue version 6. So as you see, initial boot up, you're an emulation station. It'll prompt you for your controller inputs. I've been working on something with this, so it's not asking me for that because I've already set up my keyboard. So scrolling through, you know, everything looks normal for the most part. Um, you know, the wheels and everything with the Hursty Blue, Motion Blue stuff going on here. Really awesome looking theme for emulation station. But there's a lot of changes. There's a lot of new stuff, a lot of cool stuff. So obviously over time, there's been a lot of things added to emulation station. You know, like the, uh, where are they at? Where are they at? Well, we don't have them activated, I think, but your collections, your favorites and all that kind of stuff. But who cares about any of that? That, that stuff's a given. But over there at Team David Marty, the motion blue guru, He's added a bunch of utilities and a bunch of scripts and awesome stuff to make your image building even easier and funner. And not just if you're a builder, but to experience messing around with an image, a build that you just want to enjoy and play games. There's so much more added that we've always dreamed of having. So in your RetroPie setup screen, configuration screen, we have a lot of new options. And we'll switch over to attract mode in a moment and take a peek at that because there's a lot more going on over there as well. But, you know, a lot of the stuff that you're accustomed to, you know, your audio or whatever, but now we have access to background music. So you can disable, enable, do all that from here. Pretty sweet stuff. Bluetooth like normal configuration editor. And then we have our ES collections and then our game list utility. So if you go into, let's go ahead and go into ES collections and take a peek at that. So any of these new options you click on and you open up, you will be greeted with, you know, what the actual utility or script does. So for example, this is the emulation station collection list generator. This will add or update the, col the custom collection game list that will be used to show games in the custom collections menu item. Periodically, as you add and remove ROMs, rerun this skip to keep the game list up to date. This script is only usable if your ROM file names are named according to the no intro hyperspin MU movies naming standard. So most everybody should have made sure that the, those are the, the, the file names that they've been using. I've been using those for a while now as well, but that's where it's at. After adding a new collection list, restart emulation station. Press start, game collection settings, custom game collections, then enable the new custom collections you wish to see on the menu. So pretty much what this is doing is setting up, you know, some pre-populated uh, collections or whatever, setting that up for, for emulation station. Pretty sweet. We're not going to go through and actually do most of this, just kind of touch on some of this stuff. So gameless utility um, is also a pretty interesting one. Jumping into that, you will be greeted with a big, long, like nothing in here, like... <laughs> leaves you hanging like you know exactly what it does so this utility will install pre-made emulation station game list xml files as well as perform a cleanup i think this utility is pretty cool these pre-made files will be located in the rom the roms folder along with the roms themselves cleanup utility would only work on game list files that are located in the rom folder so it can install pre-made game lists it contains pre-scraped information for every game for a particular system with multiple entries for game to account for known ROM file extensions. So some ROMs or systems will have multiple file extensions, file name extensions, and this takes an account to that and gives you multiple entries just in case. Just in case. These pre-made files are set up in such a way to use the 
no intro naming convention for use that's used by Emmy Movies, Hyperspin, Launchbox, etc. You will also need to choose your ROM file name extension when installing a pre-made list. They are also set up to use the following folders. So this is kind of cool because if you don't have your game list already made up, and especially an emulation station, um, you know, you have to use outside utilities and stuff like that if you want to use video and all, you know, to set up your game list properly anyway. This will do it for you. And it'll set up to, it, like it says here, set up to use the following folders for the game media. So box art, card art, snap, and wheel. That is awesome. So you can easily use this. Bam, if you already have your, your snaps, your videos, once you use this game list utility, boom, put those snaps in the snap folder on your ROMs, you know, whatever system in the ROMs folder, and you're good to go. So that's, you know, I don't want to exactly go over in detail everything, but these utilities are freaking awesome. So you have ES themes like usual, file manager, your GPIO shutdown utility, so you can enable, you know, your power off um, through the, the GPIO, pretty sweet. Launching screens utility, you can install and like change up, uh, you know, what the launching screens will look like. It's pretty sweet, I've been messing with that. Media removal tool, so this one, let's go ahead and open that up. Like I said, there's so much, so much to this. This utility will remove extra media files, box art, card art, snap, etc. for a chosen system where there is not a matching game for it. If you keep your media for MAME or Final Burn Alpha, there is a special choice just for that. This script expects you to be using the following media folders, so the ones we've been using, you know, pretty much for a while. Always make a backup. Yeah, it's kind of giving you a warning. Make a backup. You don't want to screw nothing up or regret doing something. So this is pretty cool. If you just if you take all your artwork and you throw it over, and then say I've, I'm actually I've used this. Um, say you have a, a media package and you just pop it over PlayStation for example. Say you only want to put 50 gigabytes worth of PlayStation on there, but you have the full you know library of artwork for the whole system. So if you're picking and choosing, it can be kind of, you know, oh, you got to match up the artwork and whatnot, unless you make a separate folder of those games and then re-scrape, you know, the videos and all that. It could be a pain in the butt. But if you use this and you transfer all your artwork, transfer the select games that you want and then run this utility, it'll free up all that space, remove everything. Pretty cool. That comes in handy. It might not sound like it does, but if you're an image maker, freaking that's, that's sick right there. That helps out a lot. Saves you time. Yeah, if you're transferring over all the artwork, that takes time. But sometimes it's easier to do it that way. So your Raspi Config like normal, RetroArch, and then your RetroArch Bezels utility. So this is pretty neat. You can install bezels for your consoles and whatnot. Have it just set up and it works. Pretty sweet stuff. RetroPie Reference. This is cool. You have a lot of stuff in there that, that um, it's a reference. To me, it's kind of like a little cheat sheet in case you forget something. Not just for the, the new guys, but, you know, some of us might need reminders on certain things. If you go in here, there's a bunch of little options that you can get, ref like a refresher course. An emulation station, a tracked mode, you know, retroarch, all that kind of stuff. Like, it goes over, you know, little, little snippets of details that you might have forgotten. Your RetroPie setup like normal, run command configuration, show IP splash screens so you can go ahead and swap up your splash screens your splash screens switch genesis to mega drive just utility to swap the two you know sometimes people are you know they don't like mega drive because they grew up in the u.s and they know it as the genesis hey you could swap it easy peasy right and then a system info tab pretty self-explanatory and then switch to a track mode which is what we're going to do right now Switching default boot to attract mode and rebooting. So this does take a moment, but not a big deal. So let's let it happen. Here we go, booting up into attract mode. I had to take a little vape break, my bad. So here we go. If you're accustomed to motion blue, and you're accustomed to, you know, attract mode motion blue, then this will look similar, but, it's so easy to change things up. 
So if we scroll through, or actually we don't want to go through all the games I have on here. That's for another time, guys. Our RetroPie setup screen, essentially. So we have a ton of options. Some are going to be shared between this and Emulation Station, and some of it's going to be strictly for Attractor Mode. So you have a lot of the same stuff. Go back to, a, to Emulation Station. You can reboot, go to Raspi, Config, your Media Removal Tool, which we just went over, Launching Screens, the GPIO Shutdown, your File Manager, Favorites Utility. You can go through and mess around with the Favorites. Displays Utility. Um, that one's going to come in real handy because if you go into Displays Utility, what it's going to let you do um, is switch. You could switch between the traditional system menu or the nested menu. So this is going to have menu options for both. So if you go into, you know, right now we're in traditional, but if you switch to nested, you would go to nested menu options. But right now, if you just go to traditional menu options, you can go and hide and show displays. Now, if you're in a track mode and you hit tab on a keyboard or whatever you have that map to on a controller, you can go to your displays and hide and show, you know, whatever you want as far as collection systems and all that can be a pain in the butt. If you've ever had to set up a track mode on your own and set up all your displays, oh my God, it's so time consuming. Motion Blue version six has that all set up for you. Everything's ready to go. You just need to enable, you know, the displays for everything you want. You can do it the traditional way, go into displays through, you know, the configuration within track mode by hitting tab or whatever or you can go in here going through here makes it a lot quicker and easier so if you go to show display you can go through and whatever ones you select you just select them boom 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 um, it still takes a minute you know to go through and select everything but once you reboot everything will be showing if you have to go through displays in the actual track mode screen it is very time consuming going in and out and scrolling all the, like this just makes it so much easier just because you could scroll faster to me that's that's a huge plus so i just wanted to showcase that this is a huge utility to me that just helps out immensely um so back to it configuration bluetooth background music you got your background music in attract mode as all as well and you can go through that and mess around with you know enabling disabling through this and then another cool one attract mode theme utility you can go through and get themes so let's go ahead and peep that out see what that looks like i haven't really messed with it. i always just kind of like this theme but if you go through here it's very similar to like installing es themes um so you can change your theme right here option you know c change theme update install script um so you have a ton of the attract mode themes that we're accustomed to and then a lot of newer ones so you got RoboSpin, the Hursty blue system main uh, ds cosmo arcade with the menu nds and systems grid menu grid systems silky menu silky systems back to basics comic crazy unified snazzy pretty cool stuff so not sure if these are going to be updated new ones added over time but this is a nice start with some really awesome themes. So once you install them, all you gotta do is change your theme to whatever you want. And you can do that through here, or you can do that through, you know, configuring the displays in attract mode, but it's easier going through this way. So just another neat thing. System wheels, this one's pretty cool. You can go through and change up the wheels, like the way you want them. So you can install, you know, the box alloy red wheels, um, Black Glass, Comet Crazy, Framed, Greenlicious, Hursty Blue, which is installed by default. Or no, was it installed by I don't even know if it was installed by default, but it's there. I think I installed it. I don't remember. Showcase, Sterling, Transparent, and Trimmed. And then you can just go ahead and swap them up. Change it, and then your, your system wheels will be different. Pretty cool stuff. Like I said, there's just so much to this to make it like so much more easier. Attract mode system utility, another interesting one. So this utility will provide you a quick way to back up and restore your attract mode settings and files. Pretty good stuff because if you have everything like set the way you like it and everything's kind of working, 
and then you kind of have an idea of tweaking something, if you just back it up first, you're good, just in case you screw something up and you can't remember. I've done that plenty of times. Gone in, messed with something, and just totally jacked it up and then couldn't figure out what the heck I did. So once you have it to a point where it's, it's almost like in a role-playing game, man, just save every once in a while. Save whenever you got a chance. Do the same thing here. Periodically run the backup utility and, you know, back up your attract mode settings. So pretty good stuff. Wi-Fi, system info, splash screens. Like I said, a lot of these are going to be shared, but a lot of them are, you know, dependent upon if you're in ES or attract mode. So what else can you say? Like this, I'm not even really going over exactly everything. I just wanted to kind of quickly highlight some of the stuff that I'm really excited about with Motion Blue version 6. Because it's just, it's just fl flipping, flipping, man, see, I'm losing my words, man. It's flipping awesome. Just so much you can do. And like I said, if you don't like the style of Motion Blue, <laughs> it has an attract mode theme installer. You could change it to your liking. A lot of new cool stuff in there, so that is pretty awesome. I like Motion Blue the way it looks, but I'll probably mess with the themes a little more in a later video. Share that with you guys. But I've got a lot of work ahead of me. I'm working on some you know, stuff with Motion Blue version 6, obviously, as you can see here. Um, but there's a... Uh, man, like, if you want to get into building your own image, which is what I always recommend. A lot of people have made images, thrown them out there. People enjoy them, mess with it, and have a lot of questions. And that's what we're out here for. A lot of us try to help people out. But the one great way to learn is by doing yourself. And Motion Blue version 6 helps with that. Because some people can, like, they, they, they might be a little overwhelmed. Like, how, how do I get into this? I want to get something kind of snazzy looking, like attract mode. Motion Blue version 6 has got you covered if you want to have an easy time making an image, customizing it to your liking, and kind of learning, you know, through it. Like I said, there's a lot of references, a lot of cool little things in here. All those new utilities that we've never had before. Special scripts. It is amazing stuff. So I wanted to showcase this. It's being dropped now. If, you know, it should have been dropped before I dropped this video. I'm not sure the timing, but it's out there as far as today. Link will be in the description for David Marty's channel if you want to find out where you can get the base image. And just to, to, to note, the base image does not include you know, any BIOS files or ROMs or anything. This is something for you to build on. Just wanted to be clear on that. David Marty does not put out, you know, anything with, with games or ROMs or BIOS files. He doesn't do anything like that. He just does these awesome base images for people to learn and build off of. And I think it's great. So peep his channel out. Smash that like button over there. Smash it over here. Subscribe over there. Subscribe over here. David Marty has continued to surprise us, you know. He said, no more motion blue. That was it with version 5. And then, boom, version 6 upside your head. Appreciate it, guys. Catch you next time. Bye-bye.